Now, in our genetic cross videos, we kept the genes pretty simple. Some genes are that simple and straightforward, such as in Mendel's peas. They're either tall or short, yellow or green, and so forth. Some genes we simplified to make the questions a bit easier or to show a certain concept. This video will look at a couple more unique types of genes. First, epistatic genes. Sometimes there is a gene with the sole purpose of hiding the effect of another gene. These genes that hide or mask a gene are called epistatic genes. A good example is in Labrador Retrievers. These dogs have a gene that controls their coat colors, with black being dominant to brown. But there is a separate epistatic gene that when it's homozygous recessive, it prevents dark pigment color in the hair shaft, which leads to a yellow colored Labrador Retriever. Polygenetic traits are when a characteristic is controlled by two or more different genes. The different genes interact to create many possible phenotypes. Say there are eight separate genes that all control the same trait. All eight have two possible alleles, a dominant and a recessive. There are 6,561 possible genotypes for this one characteristic. If each of those genotypes has a unique phenotype, that creates a lot of possibilities. A good example of a polygenetic trait is height. There are not just two or three set adult heights in humans. There is a wide range possible because there are different genes influencing it. Sort of opposite to this is pleiotropic genes. This is when one gene affects two or more traits. These traits seem unrelated, but they are all connected with the same gene. When I think of pleiotropic genes, cystic fibrosis comes to mind. Cystic fibrosis is a recessive genetic disorder. When someone has cystic fibrosis, there are many parts of their body affected, including their lungs, liver, pancreas, intestines, and reproductive system. Even though it is one gene, it influences many traits. Interestingly, the environment can have an effect on the phenotype of some genes. An example would be the Himalayan allele in some rabbits. This allele causes dark fur to grow on the rabbit's nose, ears, and feet. But this only happens if the rabbit is raised in a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius or colder. If the rabbit is raised in a warmer temperature, as little as a few degrees warmer, it does not grow these dark patches even though it has the allele. The enzyme needed to make the dark pigment inactivates at higher temperatures. This is also why only the nose, ears, and feet are dark, as the rabbit's core body temperature is normally above 25 degrees Celsius, but their extremities can be colder.